to No Spin. I'm Nidhi Razdan. Well, Nitish Kumar dumps the BJP and join hands with Tejasvi Yadav and the Congress in Bihar once again. Five years after he left the RJD Congress for the BJP, Nitish Kumar has come full circle. The new government will be a Mahakat Bandhan or Grand Alliance of seven parties and one independent. Nitish announced shortly after he and Tejasvi, along with other opposition leaders, met the governor to stake claim. Nitish Kumar will be sworn again as Chief Minister tomorrow at 2 p.m., while Tejasvi Yadav will be his deputy. The same alliance fell apart in 2017 when Nitish Kumar walked out and accused Tejasvi Yadav of corruption. But today, it's a picture of Bonhomie. Nitish has been unhappy with the BJP and believed that the BJP was going to do an uddhav on him and split his party. Everyone knows what the BJP had planned in Bihar, Tejasvi Yadav said today. The BJP itself has called Nitish's move a betrayal. So what does all of this mean for politics in Bihar and for the national opposition? Because Nitish also sees himself as a potential prime ministerial candidate. But have his constant flip-flops politically hurt his credibility? That's among the many questions we're asking on the program tonight. Joining us on the show this evening, we have uh, with us Lalita Kumara Mangalam, leader of and member of the BJP, Anand Madhab, spokesperson of the Congress, also with us. Lalita Kumara Mangalam, I just want to begin with you first. Uh, the BJP has described today's events as a betrayal, uh, but the same could be said of what Nitish Kumar did to the RJD and the Congress back in 2017 when he dumped that alliance for the BJP. Uh, Nidhi, I agree with you that Nitish, this is not the first time he's dumped an alliance. I think he's changed sides five times since the 90s. And uh, when we were elected in uh, Nitish, uh, Nitish and I, this late, uh, late Nitish, no, I, sorry, my party, the BJP, uh, uh, a few years ago in the last Bihar elections, the local elections, uh, we had made it clear that even though the, we have many more seats than him, Remember that it's, uh, you know, uh, he has only about 45 to 47 MLAs, whereas we have a huge number more, uh, that we, we had promised that he would remain the chief minister, regardless of whether he, his, uh, the number of MLAs he had was less than ours or not. He kept our promise, though, as you know, it did take uh, a certain amount of uh, persuasion by our central leaders to the state leadership. Now, uh, presently, quite frankly, if you ask me, I don't think this is just about Bihar anymore. Today's Nitish is not what he was in 2010. He's been chief minister for, I think, almost two decades. In a couple of years, it'll be two decades. The changes we have seen in Bihar certainly are not enough to keep the people of Bihar satisfied. There has been some change, but given Nitish's past record of, of um, well, efficiency in governance, uh, I don't think this is that same. But what do you think drove also, out? Just, just let, let me finish one yeah. sec. Let me finish. Huh? Also, let's remember that in 2013, when he dropped the uh, the BJP after nearly 17 years together, it was after Narendra Modi ji's name was announced as candidate That's for PA. Right. Nitish has for some years been having these uh, ideas about being the opposition joint candidate for an op opposition, whether it was the BJP at that time, he thought. Now he probably thinks it's the uh, Mahagarbandan, as they call it. Uh, the, the candidate for uh, uh, central elections. I think he feels that um, uh, his role in Bihar is now limited. He has Tejasri Yadav literally yapping at his heels. Um, and uh, with uh, Lalu really uh, already in decline, uh, sure. he thinks that it's time for him to uh, up his act and look at his own existence. But, but I don't think this how is do you, just how about do you look at, How happy. do you look at the feeling in the JDU and, and what is certainly coming out of the Nitish camp that they feared the BJP was trying to break the JDU? Uh, the comments of JP Nadda recently that, you know, ultimately only the BJP will remain and other parties will cease to exist. Uh, that seems to have something that has also rankled uh, very much. You don't think that that was no, a factor? Uh, the the uh, stupendous uh, and uh, mostly unexpected from everybody's side, except our own side, because we know how hard we work for it, uh, growth of the BJP throughout the country has irritated almost every other opposition party uh, or parties who were once in opposition with us and today may be in Gadbaddan with us. Uh, there are comparisons being made about Maharashtra and uh, Bihar. But let's remember that in Maharashtra, people didn't vote for the Mahagadbandan, they voted for the NDA. Here, it's the opposite. Uh, now, let's not even go into that because quite frankly, as I said, I feel very strongly that this is not just about Bihar. Uh, Nitish, for all you know, may well hand over to Tejasvi after two years. For all we know, that may be I'm the end of the table agreement. I'm only asking whether you feel the BJP's treatment of its allies is a factor. 
do you believe the that that i mean for example mr nadda's comments were they a little mm -hmm. misplaced you know when you're trying to make friends with smaller parties But is the when, aim to uh, finish mr nadda no the aim is not to finish anybody but if the bjp has to grow then that's our job mr nadda is the president of the bjp he was speaking to bjp workers bjp mlas etc where he said that one day the bjp will be the main party we already are in fact but there are yes we would like to go in the south etc there is no secret about the ambitions the bjp has had uh when we say that we would like to be the single okay. most powerful party in this country in all almost right, all, all right. the states so, so you're saying that Now, there's nothing to be i mean you're saying that up front the risk to let, them. let me let me ma'am let me just let me just get mr abhishek jha spokesperson of the jdu joining us uh, as well abhishek jha you heard what lalita kumara mangalam of the bjp was saying there uh how would you like to respond to that ultimately what was the bottom line for nitish to move away Abhishek Jha can you hear me We're just going to check his line again but Ghansham Tiwari of the Samajwadi Party is joining us because Akhilesh Yadav was amongst uh, the first opposition leaders to welcome the developments in Bihar very publicly today uh, Ghansham Tiwari you're from Bihar yourself uh, you know what was it at the end of the day i mean you know do these political flip flops hurt nitish kumar's credibility though at the end of the day when you have so many of them you know over a period of time good evening nidhi to you the viewers and my fellow co panelists i think if betrayal is is uh, an act then bjp has made it uh, its competitive advantage in the last 8 years from arunachal to goa to to maharashtra to karnataka it's only a matter of time that every state they, they are in they would have betrayed either the mandate or the, their alliance partner or the promises they have made so i think in today's politics the way it is playing out unfortunate but true is the it's not about the moral fabric it's about what you want to save and in this particular case what is important to save right now is is the idea of india the constitution the communal harmony the atmosphere of communal harmony and this this agenda that bjp has uh, brought to the country where if the inequality rises it doesn't matter we will say modi ji mahan hai where unemployment rises it doesn't matter we will loudly say modi ji mahan hai where your leaders uh, uh, abuse a woman we will say uh, and there are photographs of that leader with every major leader we will say that he is not part of bjp this agenda where where the the party at the hem of of the country it, it lies uh, point blank even in the face of fact that agenda must be defeated so i think what is happening in bihar in the light of it is a, a new new sunlight for the for uh, the politics in the country both at the state level and but much more at the national but level but ghansham tiwari I, uh, uh, i'm sorry to interrupt here but nitish kumar uh, you know i mean he he distanced himself and broke off from the bjp back in 2013 because of narendra modi Uh, did he have any illusions about the bjp's hindutva agenda no he didn't he knew that when he you know went back into that alliance with the bjp in 2017 and when he left uh, at that time he was accusing tejasvi yadav of corruption and today you know you know it's all, all is well i'm asking that you know how long will voters put up with this how you know will, will this not hurt a politician's credibility well i think when when voters see what is happening in maharashtra what is happening in madhya pradesh what was what almost happened in rajasthan they realized that that they are in for a spin that um, multiple political parties are playing but what is more important is in in last 8 years if you look at it ever since nitish kumar ji and i was, was working with him at the time broke up with with bhatinda party in 2013 from that point when mr maji was installed as chief minister and the way bjp tried to seize mr maji and his, and uh, the jdu that he represented right to in a way to uh, with an idea to vanquish nitish kumar and and then uh, bjp went um, full throttle in the fight against mr nitish kumar in 2015 they failed both the times and that did not stop them from from betraying the mandate and forcing nitish kumar to break alliance in 2016 and even from that moment although they had forced nitish kumar to uh, to break the alliance the bjp continued to scheme against conspire against nitish kumar be it uh, what they did with uh, the instrument uh, of uh, politics with chirag paswan or be it what they are doing with rcp singh let me ask, uh, let me ask the jdu spokesperson about that because abhishek jha is back with us abhishek jha 
uh, what ultimately is the bottom line for why Nitish Kumar has decided to quit this alliance? How do you, how are you going to explain this to people after having, uh, you know, called the RJD all kinds of names for the last few years? See, when our leader on level Nitish Kumar ji came out of the governor house after resigning as the uh, chief minister of the NDA, he explained that uh, so many things happened with the BJP and our party senior leaders will explain it very well with proper proofs and proper explanations and justifications. But one thing is very clear, the entire people of Bihar know it very well, that we have been backstabbed uh, in the last uh, 2020 General Assembly elections. There was a conspiracy for our party, there was a specific Chirat model set against our party. Uh, so many candidates of the BJP went uh, to Chirat Paswan's party, contested the elections, intentionally damaged our party, intentionally hampered the situation, and finally, so many of our candidates lost. And so, people are claiming, uh, now the BJP is also claiming that we are the party, uh, we were at the third number, but still, Nitish Kumar was accepted as the chief minister of Bihar. We know that uh, Nitish Kumar's face is very popular in Bihar and if we have a look at the history of the politics of Bihar, we can conclude it very well that whichever coalition fights on the face of Honorable Nitish Kumar ji gets the mandate. No, so, uh, how, do you, how do you explain to voters the, the flip-flops? You're, you're okay with the BJP till 2013, then you're not, then you're you know, with the RJD, then you're not, then you're with the BJP, then you're not. How do you explain that? People People of Bihar know it very well. People of Bihar have a great faith, uh, trust uh, with Honorable Nitish Kumarji that whatsoever decision he takes is for the benefit of Bihar, is for the uh, benefit of the people. People have faith in him. And that's the reason why uh, whichever, the, uh, whichever alliance uh, fights from the case of Honorable Nitish Kumarji gets the mandate. That's the uh, true result of it. So, so ideology uh, doesn't matter. What? Ideology doesn't matter. We have our ideology. We have never compromised we have with our ideology. We have what is never the ideology? compromised crime, corruption, communism. We have our ideology. So today communism. With us. Okay. Uh, I, I just, I just let me just go to Manisha Priyam, political analyst uh, joining us as well. Uh, Manisha Priyam, uh, what is this really about? Was this an existential crisis for Nitish Kumar to save his party from splitting up possibly? Uh, is it about national ambitions? Is it about both? No, I think uh, if I answer uh, in a one-pointed way, you've been asking all the other panelists about what the immediate provocation was. I would answer yes, the immediate provocation was the fact that there was this huge rally in Patna where both Amit Shah and Nadda finally spelled the riot act. They said no longer will our workers be under the leadership of the JDU. And they said that we are going to fight all the seats on our own. Remember, when I was tracking the 2020 assembly elections in Bihar, although it was an alliance going to the polls, it was very, very clear that the BJP workers were very restive. The ticket distribution, lots of complaints within the BJP. The BJP workers almost felt that they were snatching their seats back from the jaws of defeat. Now, that was within the BJP camp. The JDU people felt that they had been done in by the BJP and that it was Chirag Paswan who, you know, done them in and there was a Trojan horse within the BJP. So these were the misgivings with which the two partners went to the elections, fought it. And even after the election results, you could see that Sushil Kumar Modiji was eased out and you had a more assertive BJP by the side of Nitish Kumar. So neither in the elections nor in the governance that followed thereafter, the comfort factor was missing. The BJP has been raring to go all on its own. Now, after the Uttar Pradesh elections, remember, there were small signs. The Malahi seat, for example, where the JDU put up its own candidate. And you had Amit Shah going and making a speech against that candidate. And you could see that there were fireworks, there was simmering. But these were small signs, so to say. I think the final act was the fact that RCP Singh was somebody who was seen to be uh, approaching the BJP by the JDU. He was seen as someone who could be more trustworthy, also a Kurmi leader. Many people started talking about the JDU post Nitish Kumar and everybody felt that if we put RCP's face to that party, we'll be able to get the Kurmi votes and the EBC votes that have been consolidated so, so view, far. So here was a Nitish Kumar who was this, faced with an existential so, crisis. He, 
yeah so, yeah sorry does, ask, does this yeah, does this ask, switch over help or hurt nitish no this switch over definitely helps him survive this switch over also helps him this is definitely an existential crisis but it helps him at least with the opportunity remember politics is a game of timing opportunities open thereafter and whether he wins or defeats or whatever happens in 2024 remember in the eastern states now you will have a mamta banerji you will have a bihar government and you will have a jharkhand government all of which will be non bjp chief minister in jharkhand also the bjp is not been able to uh, put mr hemant soren and the congress coalition out of power Yet. so you will have three chief ministers there remember the optics at least will be different there's likely to be far greater political voice than we've seen until now 2024 i feel is a done deal as far as mr modi and the bjp is concerned but in bihar itself i would see that there will be an opening up of space there will be some maneuvering the opposition that has been faltering so far not been able to find a united uh, you know space for themselves now you can see the scripts there after the last right. thing that i would want to say here is yeah. that look at the timing of it you know nitish kumar and his party voted for draupadi murmu so you know the optics was never there even till the last minute that this is going to happen but anybody who knew the ground knew that well they are really living in two separate houses so even before the final divorce has been inked before it's been put to paper to the governor house you had a nitish kumar and his ilk that did not support yashwant sinha despite the fact that he was a bihari and went and voted for draupadi murmu so i think he is a smart uh, you know operator of politics he is a smart political entrepreneur to not let the winds even have a whiff of what he was up to and you could see this today now well, what he will do we in the media this, compliment this him for a swift, swift yes. end to this political uncertainty at least after very the pain swift. of maharashtra very swift. after the pain yeah, of maharashtra swift. but but mr anand madhav of the congress is with us and anand ji i mean is there no discomfort at all in the mahagath bandhan as you are calling it again uh, about getting back together again after having been betrayed at that time in 2017 i is everybody happy with this yes in fact uh, we, we all know that what is the stand for the congress anyone and everyone who is standing as a communism and fascism congress is with them this is the first thing and second thing this bihar will prove the graveyard for the bharatiya janata party and the bihar syndrome will be repeated many places in many states as well because we all know the kind of things which are happening in last 8 years is not just tolerable and uh, no one is talking about the real issue everyone is talking about some uh, some or the other issue and the most importantly the, how the bjp has used their ally bjp has used their allies like a door mat they have used and discarded they have used and shown their many allies all over india not just in bihar the first, from the very first day nitish ji was not comfortable with this current alliance with the bharatiya janata party which has uh, been shown at many places at many uh, time which was reflected even the ministers of uh, nitish last nitish government ji they have alleged uh, nitish kumar and right now if they are saying anything they were the part of it they were the part of it so it, they cannot be excused for that so now the time has come that bjp must roll uh, their uh, bag and package sure, but i mean i am just asking that have you forgotten what nitish kumar did to you in 2017 please come again your voice is cracking have you forgotten cracking. what nitish kumar did to the congress uh, R- rjd gathbandhan in 2017 that's uh, so all so far as the person is not so important it's important the issue on which we are sticking we are supporting nitish kumar and the ally this mahagathbandhan on the issues and all we right. will be always with the issues we are fighting for it we are suffering but of course the time will come when the people realize that it will come come with us uh, abhishek ji everyone ja, will come with us does nitish kumar harbor national ambitions does the jdu now really want to project him as a potential leader of the opposition ahead of 2024 everyone has See, there are two aspects abhishek ji ja, that question is for abhishek ji ja, yeah there are two aspects nitish kumar uh, 
इज ऑलवेज वरीड अबाउट द वोटर्स नॉट अबाउट द वोट उन्होंने हमेशा वोटरों की चिंता की है वोटों की चिंता नहीं He has all the capacity, capability of becoming the prime minister of the nation. He has proved his quality uh, through his skills, through his hard work, and through his long political career. But this does not mean that he has aspiration to become the prime minister. For, prime, for becoming the prime minister, uh, one should have remember we understand this fact very well. So there are two different aspects: one, having the quality of becoming the prime ministerial candidate. And the other, actually becoming the prime minister, candidate or becoming the prime minister. So Nitish Kumar has always worried about the voters. He is not concerned about what push he gets. He is about a far all. Today also some of the uh, media Your, persons asked him. Did, did you question, just did, 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 did you that say that he is uh, above okay. power and that he is not worried about the post he gets? Ah, uh, definitely Nitish Kumar. He has then then by what is all the flip flops about all these years? <laughs> Please. It, it is. It is. It is for the sake uh, of the party. It is for the sake of the people of Bihar. It is for the I sake of the, the good of the people. It is, is not for the chief minister's it, it, post. It is. It is, it is like. Uh, oh, nice. Uh, it, it is like uh, fighting against the conspiracy, which was intentionally done for our party. It is all about that. It is not but, that. Okay. But but but. For what post he gets? But Ghansham Tiwari, let me just ask you, in, just as I get final comments. that in terms of the opposition's fight against mr modi in 2024 does this complicate the opposition space to have yet another leader uh, you know come in uh, i mean mr nitish kumar was at one time really seen as as a possible good consensus candidate in the heartland chief minister important state uh, clean image etc so much has changed since then new faces have come in ksr has got his hat in the ring mamta's there um, uh, and of course arvind kejriwal is there so does this Hurt or help the opposition's cause? Well, it definitely ha- helps create a narrative which is counter to Bharatiya Janata Party. Uh, there is wider cynicism as the country slips into uh, common people slip into poverty. Promises that BJP made don't stand on the ground, as well as uh, Mr. Modi and his speeches don't matter. So there's a, there's wider cynicism, and people are looking towards the opposition to present a, a, a simple progressive narrative. And that simple pro- progressive narrative is. the nation must progress in uh, especially the common man in that simple uh, progressive narrative is we cannot have a everyday communal hatred spewed on television by bjp and its godi media and uh, the the simple uh, progressive narrative is that we need a, a leadership that is trustworthy that cannot just appear on a television do no press conferences um, diminish the parliament diminish the institutions of the country diminish the 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 center center state relationship and then say things that they don't mean they don't intend to do so as a result i think that 2024 uh, will crystallize very formidably at least in terms of narrative in terms of leadership that question is still out there and i'm not going to to say that that question is settled today well your boss akhilesh yadav might also have his hat in the ring so i should just keep quiet I, I'm sorry, but it, it, the, let me get a last the, the narrative last quick comment from lalita kumar mangalam i have 30 seconds ma'am yeah i just like to say wait and watch I think it's fairly clear why Nitish has taken this jump. Uh, he's done it before. He's done it again. If uh, some people want to say it's for the good of the people of Bihar, well, that's what they believe. They are welcome to it. Well, But I let just, us now. I just want to let us now understand I, one thing. Yeah. That uh, in 2024, it's the people vo- people's vote that counts. And uh, I, I mean, given how united the opposition seem to stand, you yourself said Nitish, I think, has just kept the door ajar. He voted for Draupadi Murmu. but now he's broken the opposition so i think he's left his options open uh, how one wants to place that how one wants to portray it is up to everybody else but i think we need to wait and watch it's actually too early it's but quite i'm quite touching sure. to see there's so much yeah. concern for for the votes of I'm the people who ultimately must be wondering bhai humne kisi ko vote diya aur kuch aur nikla but i, I want to i want to end with a tweet from my colleague maha siddiqui i want to end with this because this sums up this sums up the bihar story so beautifully Uh, in 2013, Nitish called Narendra Modi Hitler. In 2015, Modi said uh, Nitish has a DNA problem. In 2015, uh, Nitish called Lalu a snake. In 2017, Lalu called Nitish a snake. Uh, in uh, in 2017, uh, Nitish said Tejasvi Yadav was corrupt, and in the same year, Tejasvi said that he was the Bhishma Pita of corruption. That's uh, despite all these uh, names that have been thrown at each other. we have seen all kinds of alliances taking shape as far as bihar is concerned what happens next do watch this space thank you very much to all of you for joining us